Hello, I'm Timothy Hobbs, and today I'm going to be doing another live coding session for Vegan Buddies. I'm starting very late today because I was trying to figure out why I was having pretty severe glitches in the recording of the, the live stream last week, and I thought that perhaps I could get it so that OBS would be recording using the graphics card rather than the CPU, and I wasn't able to figure that out. so. I do not know how to solve the problem. I might have to end up investing in a different computer. Um, I'm kind of wondering if there isn't a place in the market actually for a laptop that has a built-in capture card and perhaps even a second computer, like perhaps a, a small low-powered ARM computer with a good graphics card that would just like be specifically for live streaming, like the laptop would have the main computer in it and then the secondary computer in it. And the secondary computer would just run OBS and just do the streaming so that it was, it was isolated from the main computer. In any case, I see that the connection, Twitch is showing the connection is unstable. I'm not really sure what I can do about it. My internet's not the best. Maybe in the future I will have better internet. I hope so. And that's enough about the live stream recording issues. So let's get started. I'm thinking that I should try to change the, the way I um, organize these videos. And what I want to do is I want to make it so that when I'm doing the videos, I'm going to be creating a blog post while doing the video. And uh, so uh, the blog post isn't just a link to the video, but it's a body of text saying what kind of development happened on that week. Um, I hope that this doesn't end up taking away time from development. Of course, it's extra overhead. But uh, I think that it's better to be very communicative and hope that other people are then able to follow along in the blog and then help with development than to massively invest in the development myself and try to be Superman. Um, I don't actually recall what I was doing last week at the end of the stream, um, so I'm gonna re remind myself of that by just loading it up here. Hopefully this doesn't kill the connection entirely, but it probably will. Um, I don't know if if this video is even going to support seeking. Um, let's try this. I don't know, it doesn't seem to be seeking very well. Now it says that the connection is excellent, even though it's also loading this from here. Very confusing. Um, hello? Well, it doesn't want to load, so I think that I will close that and just try to recall what I was doing last time. Um, so I was trying to get this test script, as I see, uh, from the windows I still have open in the virtual machine. I was trying to get this test uh, runner working, and I'd just gotten the matrix server installed. I remember that now. So. I was able to log in here uh, via element uh, desktop and that's logged into the matrix server that I'm running in Docker Compose, not like the matrix.org home server, but my own home server that's running locally. And uh, so now, I need to 
set up a matrix bot that's able to connect to this server and maybe communicate with me. So I probably want to create a second uh, new user. So I'll create like test bot as a new user and uh-huh maybe I need to do docker docker compose up I seem to recall that um, last time when I was doing this uh, hello where is Emacs? No, that's definitely not what I want to do. For some reason, I can't work with um, floating windows when I am uh, running the virtual machine. That when I drag the floating windows, it's actually dragging the host floating window, the vo floating window for the virtual machine, and not the floating window that I want to be dragging. And I need to very carefully come up here and defloat the virtual machine window in order to get back to where I was wanting to be. But I'm confused as to why the window switcher didn't switch to Emacs when I told it to. But now I'm here and after going up and doing git fetch github vegan buddies default or maybe it's just the default then I can do git uh, git log git um, So it's a no op, so I don't have anything against the, uh, I don't have any changes there. And git reset. Fine. Cool. So now I'm up to the head and I can start a new blog post in Emacs by doing content blog copy this stream 13.md and what's today 24 24 and I started at 9 920 is basically when I started. Um, so I just start out by um writing like what I'm going to do in the stream. I haven't actually done anything yet. And this window switching is really broken for some reason. Uh-huh, I had multiple windows that looked exactly the same up, open, that's why. In any case, so element has loaded and now I can come here to the make file and aha, uh -huh, I already did like, I already created a user named bot and mock client. And so now I wanna probably create the mock client and try to get it to talk to me 
as the user test. So right here, I'm logged in as test. And I can add a new person bot at bot. Oh. So here's their wait, there's an empty it's why does it say uh, I'm not really sure what just happened. Leave that. I want to talk to bot at or what's my name? My name is this. copy and then I'll start a con for, wait that's really nasty why doesn't it let me edit that it's like one of those it's just horrible I hate you um, they like went out of their way to make it difficult to use the software uh, I'm just getting frustrated Now I have a room with bot, so I'm DMing with bot, and I should see messages appear in this if I then write a bot that uses the correct credentials and sends messages there, which would be like a good test to see if I've actually even gotten things up and running the way I hope that I do. Um, so... I'm confused, like where is the code that I was working on last time? Is it in lib? Models? Um... I seem to recall that I had some code that I was working on and now I don't know where it is. Maybe I really hadn't started writing that code yet. Okay, so maybe I'm getting confused with another project that I was working on since I'm only doing this once a week. Um, so right now I just have test diesel code and what I need to be doing, for one thing, I need to move this guy over to the right workspace. What I need to be doing is looking at this matrix bot API example and copying it basically in its entirety. Um, What's this? Message handler. Okay. So I can copy all of this. Copy. And put that maybe here. And then from that main, I can go ahead and copy the body of the main function.
copy and go ahead and paste that and I need to comment out the diesel code which actually won't work right now it won't even build I think because the schema has changed I changed the schema from being the diesel example comment region and now the posts like table doesn't even exist so that wouldn't even build okay so now I've got this um, this thing uh, I, I've got this example copied and I need to change the the um, directory probably where the config will exist I'll probably put um, I'll probably create a directory up here that is test data uh, test data and something like that or wh wh wait, wait wasn't it supposed to be Tommel? Um main.rs okay build failed Not really sure what that's about. Okay. Um, so I have this uh, bot config file that I need to put the username and password into. And I don't remember how Tomal actually works. So I need to put the user, password, and home server URL there. I'm not really sure if this is supposed to be like that without any kind of URL stuff or, or if it's supposed to be the like at username colon home server URL but I'm gonna assume that it's not going to have that uh, extra scaffolding since we're obviously sending the home server URLs well which would be like kind of redundant so now I have that, and what I want to do now is I want to do docker exec minus, uh, do I have a develop script here? Um, I want to go and exec into this. I don't want to do the down up thing, so that's why I'm, uh, copying this command rather than running develop.sh and now I can do matrix cargo run and see what happens again twitch is showing an unstable connection I hope that the stream isn't freezing like it was last time It says CPU of 62%, which is 
which is quite high and the fan is going on on full blast so I might well have to like find a different machine to do this on it seems to me like OBS has very high system requirements and this machine is I think nine years old um, or at least the CPU or, or GPU the GPU that I was trying to configure today I have no idea the machine is like third hand at this point at least but when I was trying to figure out how to get the the OBS to use the GPU today I noticed that it was nine years old um, so Mm. Well, I'm waiting for this to download. I want to look at like how the mock client is going to work. The mock client is going to um, take a stream of uh, things that it should send and things that it expects to receive and it should output an error if the things it receives differ from what it expected and show a little diff. Um, I'm looking if there's not some kind of bot before matrix that automatically plays back. That's interesting. Anyways, like extra rage material. I don't need to be angry. I need to look up um, what kind of bots there are. Um, back bot. Feedbot, Hempa. I don't know what it means, like extensible matrix bot. Like, what? what is that? Um, I'm just looking if there's not like an autumn, already created test bot that would... Um, So I wouldn't have to write this myself. I'm going to go ahead and ask on the matrix channel. Um, I'm not logged in on the virtual machine, so you won't get to see this on the stream. But they they do answer very quickly sometimes. So uh, is there? a bot for testing other bot which plays which send pre-configured messages and uh, and reports an error if it receives unexpected replies for automatically testing, automatically testing other bots. Okay. So I've sent that message. I'm kind of going to glance down there occasionally to see if they respond. And this is still downloading. I really need better internet, I guess. Um, especially now, it seems like it's, it's exceptionally bad. It's possible there was a huge windstorm lately. It's possible my antenna has gotten knocked. Uh, in fact, it says that it wasn't able to... Uh -huh. It's not connected to the Wi-Fi. It's weird. I'll go ahead and set up a hotspot. It says internet ex internet access is not available. Oh, 
parking lot. So my Wi-Fi is not even working on my cell phone. There is currently a big hole in my garden that's supposed to be filled with an internet cable soonish. I don't know when, but it will still take many months before it's actually done because I'm in a country where things do not happen quickly um, or cheaply, to be honest. I always thought when I moved to the Czech Republic that everything's going to be much cheaper here because people are poorer and the reason why people are poorer is everything's expensive um, it's like the reason why business doesn't just all move to the Czech Republic is doing business in the Czech Republic is horrible because mm, the culture and the bureaucracy just makes it very much um, well a pain to to do it to do anything in this country so Basically, it's not actually a cheaper country. I think it's in general more expensive. So now, now the live stream is disconnected entirely. Um, and it's down to 40, 50 kilobytes on the, on the download of the, the crates. Even on my cell phone, the, the thing isn't working quite correctly. It's, it's very puzzling. Um, like, even with the other cell phone network, I guess technology is just generally failing me. I do admit that I am using everything very old. Like, my cell phone is also um, maybe six years old, which I guess for a cell phone is, is not young. Um, now I need to f try to s find the... I'm connecting to the matrix room on fluffy chat because element was not working at all. And I'll see if I can't send the message via fluffy chat. Okay. So it says that it's resolving deltas, but it's also going slowly. And that shouldn't require the internet, should it? I'm quite confused. Um, to be honest, I'm not even sure why it required, it, it, why it needed to download so much stuff because I had built this previously with the same dependencies. Hmm.
I'm moving my microphone to see if I can't get it away from this, uh, um, get it away from the fan noise because the fan is quite loud right now. I have zero viewers on the live stream. I'm going to stop streaming and continue recording if that works. I don't think that the streaming works at all with this internet connection at the current moment. And I think that it's interfering with the speed of downloading these crates. And so it's best just not to stream and wait for the better internet in the future. Um, pity. So now I'm waiting for it to build. It's been said that uh, Rust has slow build times. I'm... Uh, I don't really know what to do about this. Like, Golang is fa famous for being fast in its build times. There's, of course, the interpreter languages, but my experience with using Python is that you need to run the full test suite just to find a typo, usually. And so the test suite can take 10 minutes, and that's not actually faster. Um, I think that like the, the time to find error is the, the thing that you really care about. And I think that Rust has a relatively short time to find like typo. Uh, people have said that building on a like modern M1 Mac CPU is much faster. I don't know if that's actually true. I've never really experienced that I would buy a new laptop and everything would be magically much faster. Uh, but I've always bought things used from the from the bazaar. I've never invested in like a brand new machine. <laughs> so, I don't know. Queryable, method not found. Okay, so... Here we actually have the errors. Um, so on models two, okay, that's an actual error. Um, Okay, so when I changed the from using the posts to um, y using the users table that I uh, designed, I made some changes to the types, and I guess I never rebuilt since then. So I need to go and actually look at uh, the getting started guide for diesel and see what was there originally and try to figure out what I need to change. So I32 and string are queryable here, but now it says that string is not queryable. Um, 
No method named into found for struct string in the current scope. Um, Okay, so Here I don't see them loading anything to allow string to be queryable, so don't know. Maybe this is the problem. Yeah, it seems like that was the problem. And now it doesn't like the U64 data type. Um, I64 corresponds to big int and I32 cor corresponds to integer. Either change your schema to use big int or change your numbers to I32. So I need to use assigned integer because apparently this does not support unsigned integers. Um. Or maybe I did some mistake in, so I have migrations somewhere, migrations here, and I'm using big int. I64 corresponds to big int. Server. But it says int 8 here in the schema. Isn't that like one byte? Eight byte storage, uh huh. So, why does it not like me? Did not found for string.
This isn't even like Rust related. It's so weird because it seems to me like this is like pretty much the same as the example. I really didn't change much. Maybe this is the trouble that the UUID is not in scope. Master. Maybe I need this. That didn't help at all. Okay, I'll just copy from the ex the the considers. And try to ignore the fact that it makes it intentionally difficult to copy. taking a lot longer to build than last time. Extern crate config not found. That's very promising. That means that I need to change something in my cargo.toml uh, to to add config so cargo.toml copy this guy paste it and cargo run again maybe this will help has to install an incredible number of new things wait it has to recompile all of the dependencies just because I add one dependency that's very strange um, Error connecting to Postgres VB colon foobar Zavinach Postgres Lomino demo, diesel demo. Database diesel demo does not uh, exist. Uh huh. This is diesel um, complaining. Even though I'm like not really interested in the diesel stuff right now. But it still wants. So for now, I'm just going to comment that bit. <clears throat> mm. 
Mm-hmm. So it can't find the test, the, the bot config file. And I guess last stream I was very confused about the fact that there wasn't this dot .toml extension here. And maybe that's actually an error in their um, example code and not... Um, So yeah, so I think that now I also need to not go up because I think this is using the PWD. So I need to not go up because I'm currently in the directory that contains that directory. Found a colon in line. Yeah, so I need to look up how TOML files work now. Uh, or I guess I have a TOML file right here as an example for how TOML files work. So bot config .toml. This should be like this. And there should probably be quotes like this. And if it should look nice, there should probably be a space like that and wait that was quick very well trying to log in back and error um that's probably because i don't have um this on localhost, I probably don't have um, the ports linked up correctly because I have the port exported from the Docker Compose, but I don't have the containers linked. So what I need to do, how do I link? Um, how do I expose or link containers? Um, links uh-huh now what i don't know is when i go ahead and do synapse here and do synapse here if the routing is going to work correctly because it's going to have two different host names um yeah so i need to restart docker And I should go ahead and check whether somebody answered my question on Matrix. It doesn't seem like anyone did. Strange, it seems like there's very little activity now on the Matrix chat. Oh, well, whatever. Um, anywho. So... Error while trying to log in back and error. I love how it just panics. It doesn't like. I thought this was a very simple library and maybe it's very simple because it just has panics everywhere rather than doing proper error co collection. Um, But I don't see any like question mark here. It really doesn't seem to be doing any proper error collection. Um, Backend error. Well, 
Well, that really doesn't provide you with much. Error while trying to log in. Maybe I can look up. Maybe I can, oh, they don't, do they have issues? One issue. Not really sure, am I still connected to the, is there a way to see if you're connected, actually connected? Not really sure, it seems like this, your message was sent, but bot is not online, okay. Um, let me go and look. Maybe I never even ran the, the make file. Maybe if I do. What just happened? I user ID already taken, so it seems like that user does exist. Um, I might have to switch to a library that's actually better supported. There was a second library that was like much he more heavily developed than this one, which was last committed to 2020, but I like the simplicity of this library. The other one looked a lot more complicated for some reason. Um, Just as a crazy thought, let's try this. Just getting rid of these. That doesn't help. And finally, what occurs to me is like I can sign out bot test and it seems to me that Well, uh, at least the home server is working, obviously. And maybe this, I should use this full link. I remember that I had troubles with that last time. And rather than localhost, this is Synapse. I remember that it was also like very difficult to connect using Element. Oh wow, we have a different error. It's great. I don't think that I have curl installed. Curl? Oh wait, I do. That's great. Couldn't resolve host.
Um, synapse. Synapse. And outside of the container, if I do like curl like this, then I get a response. And so the difficulty right now is actually with how the way Docker is resolving hosts. And I don't know if the trouble is that the server is refusing to respond because it's expecting localhost to be there. Or if mm, there's some problem with the Docker linking. So I need to remind myself of how this this thing is even so its server name is synapse test dot localhost and so it's possible it's being very pedantic about that host name and it only allows connections through that particular host name in which case i need to figure out how to um expose a port directly into another docker container docker compose expose ports between containers and we'll see if there's not something here So it seems like somebody is wanting something similar. No, that's that answer certainly doesn't help. Maybe Docker compose uh, forward ports between containers. Yeah, so this question is what I want. And network mode. We'll try putting the network mode to being service synapse and remove synapse from the links to see what happens. I kind of presume that what's going to happen is that it's going to say that it's not configured correctly. Of course, so let's try putting the links down here actually, because the network's now shared between those two containers. 
and couldn't resolve host. Why? These should be like on the same network, right? And here I can That's really weird. Network mode service DB instructs the doc Docker to not assign app service its own private network. Instead, let it join the network of the DB service. So any port mapping that you need to do needs to happen on the DB service itself. Okay, so I've set them to share the network. And yet, So, but it, like I've added this comment, I've set the setting, but it's still not working. And is this working now? Proceed with reset. So it does work on the host machine, but it doesn't work in the Docker containers yet um Maybe if I try getting rid of this, at least for a little while, maybe somehow it's not compatible. Okay, so obviously when I do that, I should stop being able to access it from the host machine. The only question is if I gain the ability to access it from the other container. Still could not resolve. And here, well, at least that. At least it's updating the configuration. That's very frustrating when you spend a bunch of time trying to debug why it doesn't work and you find out that the, that the changes you're making aren't even actually doing anything. Um, so I know that like changing the docker compose and restarting at least is updating the configuration. 
Um, Hmm. I'm just trying random things now. Uh huh. Now that's confusing, but let's run with it. So I need to then go to matrix client cargo run. Are we still online here? So I don't see anything coming out. Let's try. I don't see any indication that the bot like read it. Um, so what is the example code that I'm currently running? Currently it should, um, if it gets incur, then see any indication that it's actually reading the messages though. Like you'd think that it would show this this indicator moving, right? Maybe I need to do like some kind of format to this. Uh-huh. It's really weird how the the like red thing doesn't move when the bots received the message, but it doesn't that actually matter that much for our use case. But the good thing is that I've gotten like at least the example bot to to run um, on the system, so. I'm going to go back to the stream 13 blog post. Um, so I've gotten the diesel example working and the matrix bot API example working. Um, I'm going to need to uh, up Date these links. And like that. And I guess it's been over an hour, so that's the end of the stream. I'm going to go ahead and commit my changes. Work does certainly go slowly when you have annoying problems that just are not even interesting. Um, but what can you do?
Okay, so that's all for now, and I'll do another stream next week. Goodbye. See you then. If I'm actually live streaming, I'm not sure. It depends on if I figure out how to do something positive with the internet. <laughs>